Hey guys, Basil Will from Grayson Hobby, and today we're gonna go over how to change the receiver in the Wizard 220S. Two. We're gonna go over uh, rotating the VTX so you can see the LED display when you put it together. And, and also, three. I wanna go over something about the frame that I found out with the arms and how to, uh, about changing the arms and something we came across that everybody's been asking about. Wait a minute. I broke it. So it's pretty high tech video that we're gonna do. It's very technical. It's not the fun fly we always do. If you don't like technical videos, watch the next one or watch <laughs> the one before. There's nothing plug and play in this, meaning there's no adapters, there's no quick fixes. You have to solder, unfortunately. Yeah, this this is really, um, we're kind of going through the Wizard S and I, I kind of want to do a little more technical on this one. So we're gonna see how this goes. If you guys like it, definitely like it below. Let us know that you like this. But um, definitely, I want to try to get a little more technical with the Wizard S and give you guys a little more insight of what we're doing here. And be sure to like and subscribe to our videos as we have one every Thursday, except holidays. Use your pagonia antennas. Pagonia. Pagonia. Pagoda antennas. Pagoda antennas. Pagonia, Waco, um, Escape, and Dynamic. All the mispronounced words. Now we're going to do the video. New Wizard S. Uh, you'll see there's a couple things have been changed here if you look. Wait a minute. Um, yeah, unfortunately this is Wizard like, uh, let's just go ahead and call it 2.5 right now because uh, I broke it. A lot of people were actually talking about the uh, the frame, about how it was a carbon fiber, not true solid carbon yeah, fiber. If you watch our previous video, we did, I did mention the fact that the, the frame was not for real uh, fully carbon fiber. It was a layered format and I thought it was like G10 or something. I'm not exactly sure what this material is. It's some kind of like PC board material. But well, um, hey, well that's broke. Let's just take it apart. Yeah, pull it's, apart. It's layered. It's definitely layers top and bottom. What so, part is made of the sandwich? So stuff? basically, the whole entire frame kit, not necessarily the side plates, but the top plate, bottom plate, uh, the arms, and that X mount brace. Um, that is all that wafer material. So I had another wizard frame here, so I went ahead and took it apart, and I went to switch the arms because this broke from about a 10 foot hit. I, I caught a tree branch and it tumbled down a little bit. Um, I killed the power just so I didn't burn up the four in one because I was really concerned about bur burning up that ESC. So, and it hit and I heard a crunch sound and it was a very light hit. Um, and it broke right where the arms meet the frame. So I walked over and the arms are just completely broken off right there. Well, um, just tested the durability of the Wizard S. Um, caught a tree branch, came down, didn't recover in time, caught the ground, and broke the arms. Something that I've never done with the old wizard arms. Uh, I think this mixed frame is just not going to hold up for abuse. So um, I'm going to give that a thumbs down on the frame style, shape or material. So look, both of them are the same size. Both broken so. exactly the same spot on the same side. It just literally fell like this. Um, Nowhere near as strong as the stock wizard frame. I have crashed this old wizard so many times. All right, don't touch. You, have you just saw? That was a power dive. That was a power dive into a tree. So we're gonna go check it out. That's why they gave you ten props. But other than that. You still got video? Uh, I break a prop? Damn. You got video yeah, though, right? I got video and everything. Everything's fine, except for a prop. So how, so, do you fi how do you fix that? So, unfortunately, Eosheen's done a couple changes to where it's not just changing the arms. So I just wanted to do this little video, kind of explain that part. The motor guards, the actual arms right here are narrower right here, so where the guards go on. So if you try to retrofit the just the arms, this is not gonna fit, it's gonna bow out, and then with the soft mounts, your screws won't tighten all the way, and then your uh, motors will loosen no. up again. So you gotta do the mount, um, you new so new mounts. So what I'm using the old LEDs, the old arms, and the old motor guards with everything else new, and the soft mounts are back in there. So you'll see actually where the screws are touching, um, there's actually one spot the screws are touching on these, and I'm kind of thinking this might be why we have hot motors. If you look back at the original Wizard with the Naze flight controller, um, the version one LEDs, they had a uh, issue where they were, they were grounding to the frame, the motors to the frame through the screw, because it was touching the, the hot on the LED. So I went ahead and changed those two because I saw that um, realistically felt washers would fix it. But the main reason why I did that 
if you look at the back side here, the trace is fairly visible. And I was nervous that that compressed against the carbon was eventually gonna short also and ground both of them. So I didn't wanna burn anything up on that one. So for since I'm not using the motor guards that would normally, if this was sitting on the Wizard S as it comes, this is sitting on the plastic, so you wouldn't have to do anything but add a washer, the fiber washer's there. Um, but because I'm using the new or the older mounts, um, the, the LED light is actually sitting straight on the carbon, I was hesitant to use this because I had a feeling it uh, with the current and all that, it may actually, vibration might burn through. Basically, the arm, the motor guard, and the LEDs are from the regular Wizard 220. You'll see it's a straight bolt on. As far as the hole pattern is the same, the arms are thicker than the than the 220S. Did you need to solder anything? This, the I had to desolder the motor or the LED LEDs. lights right. and then solder them back on. But you gotta pretty much take this whole quad bar to change the arms. So it's, I mean, the flight controller, you're gonna have to get to get to the middle screws. It's a lot of work. So just a heads up on that one. All right, so I see this receiver is no longer in the quad for very good reasons. How's it flying? The fly my um, magic? So how do you fix it? So this receiver, how to fix it, gone. And um, Good shot. I did it so as I installed what, what, what is this? X6B. X6B, X6B has um, VBAT telemetry as well as IBUS and PPM capability. And you, and so this is the receiver. Um, I actually use that receiver in my standard wizard because I'm still flying with FlySky. So this is another mod I did for the uh, VTX itself. From the factory, the VTX, the button is actually back here with the LED screen. And you can't get to it without either taking the strap off or taking the top plate off. Um, so what I did is I took the VTX and I flipped it 180 degrees. Oh yeah, show us. So the LED, yeah, I'll show you that. But you'll see the button is visible right here and the LED is visible there. So now you're able to see what channels, what, uh, what power you're on for 25, 200 or 600 milliwatt. Um, you'll have the button here so it's easily accessible to get to changing anything. Um, the only downside of that is you have to get rid of the stock um, extension here and you'll need something like, uh, there you go, 15 centimeter extension. GH362. Yep. How much so, was that? 250. 250. So a go. couple bucks and it allows you to move it over. Um, you're not going to use some of the uh, spacers they use on it because it's a little shorter of a thread pattern. So it's literally just into it right there on the base and then the, the lock wa uh, washer and the nut on it. All right. Um, so that gives you... The ability is rotate the VTX 180 degrees, and we'll go into that in a second. So let's just dig into this, guys, and I'll show you what I did to solder. All right, so we gotta do it now. I'm gonna take the VTX antenna. Top plate off? Yeah, I'm gonna take the top plate off. All right, so top plate off, and you'll see this is modified. I have modified this for the VTX being flipped, so this is not how it would come from the factory. All right, so for example, how it comes from the factory is with the shorter extension, this right here, running out and out the back. Okay, so what we've done is we've flipped it 180. We've run this wire from, instead of being from the front, we've rerouted it through the back and then um, bolted down and we changed to the longer extension. And you can either run it above or below the stack. If this is the old way, how did the head of this wire, the, the VTX power? This power. wire? Yeah. This wire is normally in the front. So what you have to do is pull the stack unscrew the four screws here. Now I gotta pull the whole stack off. Yes. So it's not just as simple as flipping that 180. You have to take off the entire stack. Okay. Yeah, so the flight controller would have to be taken off and the wire that normally runs from the front would have to be run from the back and you're gonna want it run it over to that side. Uh, now when you put it back together, you wanna make sure you don't pinch any wires right. or anything like that because there's a lot of wires. So no side. side required, just, just some just a couple of pieces of electronics have to be turned or moved yes. and all right, it's fairly simple. All right, so to remove the receiver, I see the old one there. So this is the old receiver. Okay. This is how the old receiver is wired. You have your IBUS slash SBUS in the factory configurations, SBUS, yep. positive and ground. All right. So, so that's running these three wires. They're gonna be on the bottom side of the flight controller running up to the front to these three pins. Signal, positive, ground. Gotcha, okay. That is also known as UART6. I'm just gonna unplug it for now but what you would do is desolder, desolder those. those three pins right. or take wire snippers and clip it right at the face so you don't have, you know, you don't want wire dangling around and there to possibly ground out somewhere. Well, can you just leave that in there like that? Yeah, you could probably put a piece of tape or string tube over it, shouldn't okay. hurt anything. When you buy the receiver, it's gonna come with a couple of these, okay. these wires right here. And what you're gonna do is basically, there's an IBUS port. Okay. So what you wanna do is figure out where you're gonna mount the receiver and if the receiver, I got it 
bolt it down to the frame here at the bottom. So you're gonna wanna run it up, and it's not a lot of wire, but you don't wanna run it too tight. I usually give a little bit of extra room, so okay. maybe about an inch and a half or so. So wait a minute, where do you hook this up to? This is plugging into iBus. No, this, where do you plug that You're in? not plugging that in, you're gonna cut it. You're gonna cut it and strip the pins, and you're gonna solder it to these ports here. Now you'll see, not the first row, but this middle row, there's three rows in here. This middle row right here, this is um, for the signal, this is going to be for the positive, not the not the second port, but the third pin. That's going to be for the for the positive five volts for the receiver, and this is going to be the negative ground for the receiver. It's the middle row. That's this is what they call an uh, uninverted UART one. So this flight controller is extremely not really complicated, but it's got a lot of features, a lot of integration, all kinds of stuff going on on it. So it's it's probably confusing, but unfortunately that's the only way to explain it. On the receiver, the extra port is actually VBAT. So what you'll do is you'll hook this one up here and there's three wires coming out. You got ground, positive for voltage sensing, and then the, the third one's actually a ground as well. So hold on, this is another wire we're adding to the receiver? Yes, this, this is connected? optional. It's not necessary, but it's nice that you can actually see if your battery so is somewhat is, charged. This is in addition to the first yes, one. Yes, this is just a little bonus thing Gotcha. Here. Oh, um, bonus. Yeah, wait, just, wait, there's more. Yeah, there's more. <laughs> this yellow wire here, you could cut that off if you want to right at the connector or depin it uh, if you lift up the pin, pull it out. But you do not need the yellow connector, but the black and red, you will solder up to these pads over here. So if you look here, you'll see it's kind of hard to see the black because it's uh, underneath the red, but do you guys see that? That's the black ground and that's the red. That's actually on the other side of this, if you look at the other side, that's actually where the power is coming in to the power up the flight controller and all that. So if you solder that in there and plug it into the bottom, you'll get VBAT so and that will, it's, there's no configuration in the radio, it just comes up. Show us. All right, on the radio? Yeah. Okay. So it's going to give me battery voltage, the receiver voltage, and the transmitter voltage. So I actually have multiple um, things listed here. So that's actually kind of cool. So it says 12.26. So this is a three cell. All right. But it's just a little uh, optional thing. Oh, that's that's cool. the that's... extra thing you can wire up on that's worth the X60. It for sure right there. It's two wires. Might as well solder it. You're already soldering. Yeah, there, if you're already soldering. It. In order to switch over to the X6B receiver, you're going to have to change the UART port because we're going to have to move it. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the quad. We're going to go to this page right here. It says ports. You're going to click that and see how this is the UART ports. This is the serial ports. Mm -hmm. is, you're going to unclick it. Then you're going to go to UART 1, which is the new one we soldered up to. Select that. Then you're going to go to save and reboot. And the whole thing will come back. It's chirping. Then we're going to reconnect. So we reconnect up there. Then I'm going to go over to the configuration tab here. And then we're going to scroll down. If I can get the scroll. And then the receiver. Now, from the factory, it comes set up as S bus. I've already changed this one over. You're going to need to change it to I bus from the drop down. Okay. So it's going to say serial based receiver, I bus, and then you're going to save and reboot again. And it doesn't hurt to go back through and double check it, make sure oh, yeah, it's selected. Sometimes they have a nasty habit of not saving. So we got UART 1. Now, we got UART 1. And then we have serial based receiver on IBUS. Now that will should allow us to communicate with the receiver. And then obviously you'll go into the receiver tab. Um, Check your directions on yeah. stuff. And once you set it up, you'll need to go to your receiver tab. And then you'll need to check all the settings. Just like it says here, you have to set the 1,000, 2,000. You'll go through and set all okay, the Okay, so normal settings. normal setup. But those yep. are the few things you have to do. That's so, not too bad. That's how you change the receiver out. That's how you switch the iBus from the uh, uh, not so great factory uh, A8S receiver. Um, and that's how you get a good receiver in it. So you put the receiver back about here, right? Yeah. And there's the two screws there, is that what I see? Yeah, it's two screws. I'm actually running an airplane um, quick link right there, it's a two M2, but if you have an M2 standoff kit, it'll work as well, so I'm just running a little nut there, that, and then the screw, which holds it really nice and secure. Now, what is that thing on top, right there? This is an LC filter. Wait, wait, um, what is an LC filter? Is that code Okay, off? so, one of the guys was asking me in the first video if we were getting noise in the video. I believe I did respond to the comment, yes, I did get, with throttle punches, I was getting noise into the video horizontal lines. So what I did, um, I did add an LC filter in line between the 
speed control power that's going through I put LC filter and then I ran that to where it the regular wires it used to run from here to here I just ran an LC filter I'm actually probably gonna move that to the front of the quad just to get it out away from the receiver so what's the LC filter do LC filter it basically it's an inductor and capacitors what's and it, what it's supposed to do it, it helps reduce electrical noise the, the lines yeah the lines and it the removes video. the lines. yes yeah so if you got lines in your video that you can't get out um, you can add an LC filter and it should eliminate that or at least minimize it very little. Yeah, yeah so let's get this thing back together. Right, so remember guys, when you are reassembling, there's gonna be a lot of wires running through here. You don't wanna pinch any wires, so definitely be careful. All right, so Will, I see we had the camera out. It's a time to upgrade our camera now, if you wanna. The stock camera is not bad at all. Um, you will probably get a little better image quality out of one of the run cams or the Fox here cameras. Um, so here we got the Rotor Riot and the Swift 2. And yeah, so one thing you'll notice is this is a four pin connector um, on the factory connector. Now they're only using three wires, but it's a four pin. You'll notice on the Rotorite Swift, for example, or the regular Swift, same thing. Um, you're going to notice there's only three pins here, and then there's another two with a different housing connector. Um, that's for the OSD. The three pin is not going to plug in. Um, I guess you could technically right. cut that. But no. uh, without modifications, this will not fit on the Rotorite camera. What about this run cam? The run Swift cam two. Swift 2, um, you turn off the OSD, but it will, because this is actually a five pin, um, the first three pins are only gonna be used. As long as you plug it in with the connector all the way to the outside, it will work. Um, so it would work on a Swift 2 camera if you have one of those laying around, you wanna put that in, instead of the stock camera, because it's just a generic uh, Sony cam. The other option would be to either desolder that, change it, whatever, and that'll be in a future video probably. All right, I hope you watch it. I hope you're still hanging around. And like what Will said earlier, if you like this kind of style video, let us know. Um, this is a pretty technical video here. We could do more, we could do less. Yeah. Uh, watching the video, I know it got kind of technical. It kind of got a little, little bit over my head because I had to ask Will to stop a few times and explain it in <laughs> noob language. Yeah. Really, I, I kind of want to explain a little more technical videos. This, this quad has a lot of feature going in it. Uh, moving forward, I'm hoping that you guys like this video enough to where we can continue doing stuff like this. A little more how-tos and tutorial stuff because I think this is a great platform, but it definitely could benefit from a little tweaking.